Today we're going to be looking at import options for campaigns. On the campaign, we have this drop down list for manage members, which you can use to add members or to update and add members. Both of these buttons take you to the same wizard where you can then click the same buttons again. The update and add members is to add and update uh, campaign members, it is not to create new leads or contacts in Salesforce. Typically, people may run a report, take that report with them of contacts to an event, mark whether or not the contacts are there, maybe they don't have internet access, and then when they come back, they then want to update those uh, members on a campaign or add them to a new campaign in Salesforce. The import leads feature is used to add new leads to Salesforce that will also be added to the campaign. So we're using the upload the new leads file. We're going to browse for our test file. We have the option of assigning all leads to the same lead source, or we can map it on the next page if we leave it as none. Typically, we use this feature for a purchase list or a list of leads from a trade show. We have the option of using an assignment rule. We also have the option of picking a default member status, which we will later get the option to map, even if we select one here. We can also fire the triggers and workflow rules for leads and for new campaign members. On the next page, we get to map the lead fields. I don't have a record owner ID, but if I wanted to get one, I could simply look at a user under the admin section. And in the URL, in between the slash and the question mark, would be their user ID. Since I don't have one, I'm just going to select none. We also have the option of using a full name or a first name and a last name. These columns are zero based. So in your spreadsheet, with the first column A is zero, B is one, C is two, and so forth. And we use these to map. It also gives you the column number as well as the name of the column. Any of them that are wrong, you can change them to the correct one or select none. Down here are the custom lead fields. On the next page, we have an option of picking the status for the campaign member. If you don't select one, we'll, it will go with your default value. We also have the option of mapping any custom fields you created on the campaign member. Some differences between the lead import feature and this one for wizards is you don't get an option of mapping unmapped fields to create notes on the lead. You also don't get options of mapping them up by their email addresses to dedupe. These warnings that are showing are because I have fields on the spreadsheet that I didn't map, and because I'm not having the assignment rule selected. We don't need either of those to import the leads. You can open the import queue. Just check the status and just close that. We can see that it created 19 records complete. Let's just go back to the campaign. And we see that there are no campaign members listed, so let's refresh them. We now see our total leads are 19. We scroll down, we can see our leads. If we click on the first lead here, we see we have an option to convert the lead, which, as you would expect, is going to give you the option to add them to an existing contact, existing account, and create an opportunity. We can also go to the actual lead, which it created in here. And from that lead, we can search for duplicates to dedupe our leads. We can see that this lead, or contact for that matter, can be part of multiple campaigns. 